Hello everyone, I welcome you all once again to my series of lecture that is Understanding Pharmaceutical Science with Dr. A.J. Hariharan. So today we are going to discuss about the nutritional requirements of a bacteria. So I have divided this uh, lecture into two parts. First we will understand about the nutritional requirements of the bacteria, what are the major nutrients as well as other nutrients we are required for the growth of the bacteria. And the second part we will discuss about the classification of bacteria based on the requirement of the nutrients. First let us understand a simple about what is meant by a bacteria. So the bacteria are generally are unicellular microorganism having a size range around 0.5 to 2 micrometer in size and it can be viewed only with the help of a microscope. And the bacteria is exhibits a typical prokaryotic cell structure. So prokaryote means uh, the bacteria doesn't have a uh, well-defined membrane structure uh, inside its uh, cell, especially in the cytoplasmic organelles. For example, if you take the genetic material of a bacteria, it will be concentrated at a particular location in the cytoplasm of the bacteria. Whereas in contrary, if I see the eukaryotic cell like our human cell, the genetic material is surrounded by a membrane structure, nuclear membrane. So that's why we call bacteria is a prokaryotic cell structure. It doesn't have uh, any well-defined membrane structure of its internal organelles, right? So first we will understand what is meant by a nutrient. So the nutrients is nothing but these are certain substances. Basically these are chemical substances which is required for the growth of the microorganism. So for growing the microorganism, it needs to perform two things. One, it has to biosynthesize certain major essential chemical for its growth like uh, amino acids, nucleotides for its growth. Similarly, it needs energy for its movement or to carry out all the activities. So the basically the nutrients are chemical sources which provides to almost all type of cells for its growth, especially for the biosynthesis as well as energy production. So to understand what nutrients is required for the microorganism, this we can uh, uh, we can go through the microbial cell composition, we can easily estimate which of the elements is required for the as a nutrient for the growth of the microorganism. So by analyzing various microbial cells and their composition, it shows that 95% dry weight of all the cell is made up of only few chemical elements. So these elements are majorly, if you see, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur and phosphorus, which are present in large quantities and some other elements like magnesium, potassium, calcium and iron are present in little bit less quantities. So this major comprises about the nutritional requirement planning of any microorganism. So we can divide the common nutritional requirements of a microorganism into four different categories. The first one is the macro elements or macronutrients. The second is the micronutrients and third is the trace elements and finally fourth one is the growth factors. So let us understand each one a little bit in depth. So first the macronutrients. So the word itself, the macro means large quantity, nutrients means these nutrients, especially the macro elements or macronutrients are generally required by the microorganism in a very large amounts. So the major macronutrients, once we saw the microbial cell analysis, the six major elements are the macronutrients. That is carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, sulfur and phosphorus. Because this required in large amounts. Why this required in large amount is that these are the building blocks for the microbial cell. So the major biomolecules which are present in a microbial cell is made up of these six elements like the carbohydrate which needs carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Second lipids which is majorly made up of carbon and hydrogen. Next is protein which is made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, sometimes sulfur. The nucleic acid which needs a phosphorus as an additional material. Because this carbohydrate, lipids and proteins forms the cell membrane, cell wall, all the building block 
the nucleic acids is required for its cell division and its growth. So these chemicals and these elements are generally required in very large quantity. So that's why we call as a macronutrients or macro elements. The second is the micronutrients. So micro means small, nutrients means these nutrients are relatively required in small amounts addition to the macro elements. So along with macro elements, we have to add this micronutrients in a small needed for the growth of the microorganism. So this micro, all the microorganisms require this in small quantities. So that's why we call it a micronutrients. It majorly includes potassium, calcium, magnesium and iron. So these four things are generally required in little bit small quantities in addition to the carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen and sulfur and phosphorus. Right? So these micro elements, why it is needed? So it needed for several purpose. Sometimes it is act as a cofactor for many enzymes, especially for the metabolic activity or some catalytic activity or in protein synthesis like that it required. Sometimes it maintains the potential difference of the particular cell environment also. So for example, if you take potassium, so the potassium is required by many enzymes especially for the protein synthesis as a cofactor. So the calciums, this you can see in many endospores because the calcium produces heat resistance to these bacterial endospores by binding with the certain protein molecules to make as an heat resistant proteins. So the third one, magnesium, if you see, the magnesium has many roles in the microbial cells. Sometimes it acts as a cofactor for many enzymes but we can see magnesium in many membrane structures. Generally, it complexes with ATP and it stabilizes the membrane structure. So in cell wall of bacteria, you can see large quantity of magnesium and also it stabilizes the ribosomes. It carries magnesium and it favors the certain protein translation mechanism. Next is the iron. So iron will be available both in ferrous as well as in ferric state. It generally forms a part of a, either a cytochrome or becomes a cofactor of many enzymes where the enzymes rotate for the electron carrying purpose because this oxidation and reduced state of iron will help in the transport of the electrons. So this electron carrying protein generally carries iron as a cofactor. So these four are the major mi micronutrients rotate for the bacteria or the any microorganism for its growth. This should be needed while if you are preparing a media to culture the microorganism also this macro and micronutrients should be added in the media. Whereas the third one we call as a trace elements. It's generally required in very small quantity in parts per million or even less than that. It generally comes with a contamination with uh, water or any other thing. So it includes majorly manganese, cobalt, zinc, molybdenum, nickel and copper. It also works as a cofactor in most of the things. But out of this, zinc has its important characteristics, right? So I have already told that we will get this trace element as a contaminant. If you are preparing in your media in your lab, these trace elements will be present in a contaminant of the water or of the glassware also. It's enough for the growth of the bacteria. So I have told, zinc is more important uh, element in the trace one is that it is most of the protein structure, especially the enzymes, the active sites are generally controlled by the zinc. If zinc binds with the active sites, the enzyme gets activated. If the zinc relieves from the active sites, it becomes inactivated. So this association of zinc with the active sites is generally important for the regulatory and catalytic subunits of the enzymes. So the final one is the growth factors. So the name itself tells the growth factors. That means some of the bacteria needs this growth factor for its growth. Because most microorganisms you can see the enzymes has an ability to synthesize all the components which is needed for the growth of the bacteria in terms of a minerals or some energy sources. But some microorganisms lack one or two of these enzymes which is needed to manufacture these indispensable elements. That is, this important elements, certain elements, it cannot produce it because of the lack of the engine. That time, we have to provide this growth factor so that the growth of the microorganism occurs at a normal rate. 
So if you see the major growth factors, amino acids, certain amino acids, we generally call as an essential amino acids for the human cells because similar to microbial cells, the human cells also doesn't have an ability to produce all amino acids. It requires certain amino acids through food as a nutrition. This is called essential amino acids. Likewise, in microorganism also, certain amino acids cannot be produced by the bacteria or microorganism itself. It should be supplied from outside. So that is one of the major growth factor. Some require purine and primidines, which are the building blocks of the nucleic acid. Then some require vitamin. Most of the microorganisms require vitamins as a growth factor. So the amino acids is generally needed for the synthesis of the protein and the purines and primidines are the basic building blocks of the nucleotide. So it is needed for the DNA replication and nucleic acid biosynthesis. And vitamins, which is majorly required by many of the bacteria as a growth factor. Because vitamins are small organic molecules, it generally acts as a cofactor along with the enzyme for most of the chemical reactions. But this required in small quantity because to favor the reaction at a faster rate, so the cell division also can occur at a faster rate. So in this table, I have shown certain examples of certain vitamins which is needed by certain bacteria. For example, biotin. So it is needed by Leukenstock mesenteroids, which is a bacteria, especially for the carboxylation. It's an autotrope. It needs carbon dioxide fixation. It needs this biotin vitamin. Similarly, certain fungi like Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which is an yeast one, for one carbon metabolism, it needs biotin as a cofactor, as a vitamin, as a growth factor from outside. Similarly, the vitamin B6, which is pyridoxine, especially for transamination reaction, it needed by lactobacillus species. Similarly, the vitamin B2 riboflavin, which is generally acts as a precursor for FAD and FMN especially in the colobacter vibrios. That means we have different vitamins needed by different bacteria for one or other ways. But it is not necessarily that each microorganism requires only one vitamin. But some microorganism requires more than one vitamin at a time. For example, if we take Enterococcus faecalis needs eight different types of vitamins for its growth. Otherwise, it cannot grow on its own. Right? So apart from this one, certain bacteria needs other growth factors like the Haemophilus influenza needs heme as a growth factor and the Microplasmus requires cholesterol as a growth factor for its growth. So I think this is what I have discussed regarding majorly about what are the basic nutritional requirements for a microorganism, especially bacteria. And in my second part, we can discuss about how we can classify bacteria based on the nutrition. So based on the nutrition, we can classify bacteria into two major, three major categories. One, we can classify based on the carbon source. Second, we can classify based on the energy source. Third, based on the electron source. For example, we can classify bacteria based on carbon source into two types. One is autotrophs, second is the heterotrophs. So autotrophs is nothing but which use carbon dioxide as a principal carbon source. That means it takes carbon dioxide from the air and it can synthesize its own energy source. That is called as autotrophs. It produces own food materials. Second is heterotrophs. So these microorganisms require uh, in the form of chemical, in the form of organic molecules, the carbon source like glucose, sucrose, lipids like that it can take from other organisms for its growth so it is called as heterotrophs so based on carbon source we can classify into autotrophs and heterotrophs second based on energy source we can classify into two types one if the energy source is obtained from the light it is called phototrope if it is obtained from by the oxidation of organic or inorganic common we call as a chemotrophs so energy source from light is phototrope Energy source from chemical compound we call as a chemotrophs. So based on electron source, the release of electrons, we can classify into two types, lithotrophs and organotrophs. If the electron is obtained from inorganic source, then it is called as a lithotrope. If it is obtained from an organic molecule, it is called as organotrophs. So we can classify bacteria into three, that is carbon source, energy source and electron source. So I have given some examples. So one is the photolithoautotrophic bacteria. 
so in this we can get the name photo means light so the energy source is light litho means the electron source is from inorganic compound auto means it gets carbon dioxide as a sole carbon source so example of the bacteria you can see in can seen in most of the water ponds that is the sign of bacteria so you can see it second is photoheterotrophs the name itself that photo means light is the energy source hetero means the generally the chemical compounds as an carbon source example you can see the purple sulfur bacteria in certain reservoirs which is the photoheterotrophs and the third one is chemolithoautotrophs so chemo means it is a chemotroph that means the energy is obtained from certain chemical and the electron is obtained from inorganic so it is litho autotroph means it can use carbon dioxide as a sole carbon source so example is nitrobacter minogransky then the final one is the chemolithoheterotrophs so chemo means chemical as an energy source Litho means it can get the electron from the inorganic compound. Hetero means it needs an uh, certain chemical as an carbon source. Example, uh, that is Begiota alba. So I think this lecture might be helpful for you for understanding the various nutritional requirements of the bacteria. Based on this, we can produce different culture media for microorganisms. So thank you very much. So I wish you continually listen my video lectures through this YouTube channel. So thank you very much.